Church. I'm also one of, one of the founding members of Reading Embraces Diversity. And I want to thank you all so much for coming out today. It's so beautiful to see such a wonderful cross-section of our community represented here today. I want to invite you that if you're... Um, if you're if, if you can't hear me or if you're having trouble seeing um, and you don't sort of know how we're oriented, I want to invite you to move um, sort of towards the main street side of the common so that you would be facing the town hall on the main street side of our speakers. And that's that's how you would be oriented to be able to see and hear best Great. in this space. I want to invite you um, and maybe uh, Pastor Carol, maybe you could help me to know if this is true, um, that if you need um, facilities at any time during our program, um, that our church right across the street with the green doors is open for you and there are restrooms over there. Um, and Pastor Carol, maybe if, if they are not, maybe you could help to open the doors. That would be great. Thank you. Thanks very much. I want to thank you very much for being here today because um, in the midst of a, of a of a time in our um, in our society and our culture um, that often um, lifts up values and honors hatred, division, divisiveness, separation, anxiety with one another. You all have come out today to say that we are not a community who values those things. Right. <laughs> inside our own homes and we say those things to the people who we know are like-minded with us and today we have come outside in the open on the Reading Town Common um, with po folks who may disagree with us on other issues to say together as a community that we are a community that does not value hate and especially that we are a community that values love for our neighbor and love for our Jewish neighbor. This morning, I want to thank especially Ann Landry, who um, was a huge part in ha in getting this event put together this morning. Thank you. I want to offer thanks to all of our speakers who have agreed to be here with us this morning. To Robert Treston from the ADL New England, the Anti Defamation League New England. To Andy Friedman and Barry Berman from our Reading Select Board. To Elaine Webb and Senator Jason Lewis, Representative Bradley Jones, Rebecca Lieberman, Tally Shore, and Dr. Anna Ornstein, and Dr. Linda Snow Doxer, who are here to speak with us this morning. Thank you so much for giving your time, your energy, and your care to be with us on this important day. I also want to thank this morning some other people without whom this day and this movement would not be possible. Thank you to um, Dr. Doherty, our superintendent of schools, Bob Lasher, our town manager, our school committee and school board, especially, um, I mentioned Elaine and, and Linda who are going to be speakers for us, but who are members of our, our school committee. Um, those folks who are, have been partners with us in addressing these issues as they occur um, and who have been incredibly cooperative and eager to participate in solutions um, beyond just major events like this, but in the everyday work of making our town a more peaceful and more loving place. Would you thank them? <laughs> Select board member Vanessa Alvarado and school committee member Jean Borowski are also here this morning along with candidates for office, Jay Gonzalez, candidate for governor, <laughs> Joe Schneider, candidate for Congress, and Rich Hegarty, candidate for state representative, and um, Aaron Calvo-Bacci, who's a candidate for state senate, might also be joining us later. I want to thank all of you who are recognizing that this is an important event, not only for, this is an important occasion, not only for Reading, but for our whole area, and for all people who value the love and the lives of, uh, of uh, folks in our community who are experiencing the violence and the impact of these events. Would you thank them? I don't want to take up any more space and time thanking and welcoming people. I want you to hear from the voices of folks who have stepped out this morning uh, to, um, to give us their voices. And so would you please welcome our representative from the uh, Anti-Defamation League, Robert Tristan. Good morning. 
Communities are defined by what is happening here, not by the hate, not by the anti-Semitism, not by the racism. We define ourselves by values, as you just heard. So let's hear some of those values. Respect, respect, courage, the courage to come out and stand up against hate. Let's hear it for courage. courage. Diversity. Diversity. Justice. Justice. Equality. Equality. And standing up for one another, regardless of faith, regardless of skin color, regardless of who that person loves or how they identify themselves. We define ourselves as a community by those of us that are here today and reaffirming the values that we choose to live by. And that's what all of us need to go home with today. And we need to go and talk to our neighbors. We need to go speak to our friends, our colleagues, the people that we work with, the students that we teach, and the teachers that teach those students. Because we have the ability to multiply those values and to extend it throughout the, throughout the community. Reading will never be defined by acts of hate. Reading will never be defined by anti-Semitism. Reading will be defined by the values of the people that are here today affirm and choose to live by every single day. And the same goes for every town in Massachusetts. The same goes for our country. And it is up to us to demonstrate that courage, to demonstrate equality, to demonstrate support for justice. Because the future, the future are the kids who are in Reading schools and schools across the country. And they are looking to us today. And so we have a responsibility. So take that message and let's demonstrate it, not just on a Sunday afternoon in the Reading Common, but throughout our daily life, every day, starting when we leave here. Thank you for being here. And ADL will stand with Reading for the duration. We will always be with this community. From the first moment we discovered um, this hateful speech happening here in Reading, Christian and Jewish clergy have come together to respond in positive ways here in our community. Um, we have a number of Christian and Jewish cler clergy here together today, and so I invite us in a show of solidarity, if we could all sort of stand together over here in this general area, would y'all come join me before we move on with the rest of our program? And our next speaker is um, Andy Friedman. I follow a speaker like that. Um, uh, this is really amazing to see all of you here. It's such a positive, positive event. Positive. Get closer to the mic. Microphone. Oh, the microphone. It's better if you can't hear me, really. <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you. Is that is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I have to read this because uh, I'm not a good public speaker. Um, it's great to see you here today for this important stand against anti-Semitism. For those of you who don't know me, I guess I was just announced, Andy Friedman, so I can skip that. Uh, I'm proud to see so many come out uh, on this blustery fall day to say that anti-Semitism is not a Reading value. Hate is not a Reading value. Thanks to Reading Embraces Diversity, or RED, for organizing this rally so quickly after uh, the most recent swastikas were found in our schools. And thanks to Ann Landry for bringing this event to the attention of the select board so that we could add our voices to yours. We acknowledge the great impact this vandalism has had on our neighbors 
and to our friends. I'd like to bring it back to the true meaning of the swastika because we can't really ever for forget that. Um, so I'll cl close with a quote that stresses the importance of speaking it out against the meaning of the swastika. And this was by a German pastor, Martin Niemüller, um, who stated the following after he survived a Nazi uh, concentration camp. He was a nationalist socialist too, actually, when he, when he first started off. He said, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one, no one left to speak for me. Thank you very much for coming today. Member Barry Berman will continue adding his voice to our chorus. Good afternoon, everybody. What a glorious day to join in community, isn't it? So I want to thank also Red and HRAC and all the folks that put this together last minute um, to come out and, and speak and add your voices to this. I'm not sure why I was invited to speak, if it was because I'm a member of the select board, one of your elected representatives, if I'm also a member of the Jewish faith, as an American citizen, as a father, or just as a human being. So I'm going to talk to you with all of those hats on. Um, my Jewish friends will understand this, um, because anti-Semitism has been here since the second day after Jews walk the earth. We all know that. In fact, there's sort of a gallows humor amongst Jews that all of our holidays sort of have a similar theme. We, they, try, they hate us. They try to kill us. We won. Pass the bagels. That's been our life. The New York City neighborhood that I grew up in in the 60s and 70s was one of the most eclectic. It was the poster child of what, you know, what, what, a, what a fish stew was. We had everybody. My best friends were Italian, black, Irish, Hispanic, Chinese. In that neighborhood, everybody was Jewish. Even the non-Jews were Jewish. Why? Because Jews played a part in the neighborhood, part of the fabric of the community, and everybody appreciated everybody. I went to bar mitzvahs and I went to quinceaneas. The, the idea that a swastika would appear in the locker room at Far Rockaway High School was unfathomable. It was unthinkable. It wasn't because it was going to be something that was against Jews. It was going to be an affront to all of us. My Italian friends, fathers and grandfathers, my Irish friends, fathers and grandfathers, my black friends, fathers and grandfathers, fought to defeat Nazism. So it wasn't an affront to Jews. It was an affront to every single American citizen who believes in freedom and democracy and love. So while I appreciate everybody coming out here to support your Jewish neighbors, and I really do from the bottom of my heart, you're out here to support yourselves. This is not a Jewish problem. This is a problem. And so, yeah. that neighborhood that I grew up in, to be honest, I, I never really experienced anti-Semitism. I mean, yeah, it was around, we always knew it was around, but I never really had that personal experience. So you fast forward to maybe 10, 11 years ago <laughs> when our second grade son comes back home crying because on the schoolyard at Barrows, his friends were talking about how they hate Jews. Wow. Second grader. And when he told them, I'm Jewish, they were surprised. 
And they say, well, we didn't mean you. We just, we don't hate you. We just hate Jews. So are those bad kids? Are those kids imbued with evil? No. They learned it. They learned it from their fathers and their mothers and their grandfathers. They learned it from their institutions. They learned it at the kitchen tables. And while that's disheartening, what can be learned can be unlearned. And that's the responsibility of everybody here. We're blessed to have great teachers and a curriculum at the Reading Public Schools that basically stands up against us. And I'm really glad that our, our school committee people are here and Dr. Doherty is here. They didn't learn that in the Reading Public Schools. They learned it outside of the Reading Public Schools. And so that's where it's gonna have to get unlearned. And I think that the teachers, the teaching and the learning that's gonna go on is gonna come from our children teaching their parents. And that's all of our responsibilities, not just the Jews here, it's everybody. So I'm really hopeful. And I'm really jazzed, and I'm so excited that there's so many people here, many whom I have never met, that are going to come out and stand up, because this is a problem that we're all going to face together, and I'm really excited. So thank you all for being here, and let's stamp out hate and anti-Semitism. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Um, what can be learned can be unlearned. And our children in Reading are unlearning the, the, what they have learned in the waters that they have swum in here in America. And the place that they are unlearning it is in the magnificent Reading school system. And so I'm, y'all can applaud, that's fine. <laughs> Um, and so I'm glad to introduce the chair of our Reading school committee, Elaine Webb, to tell you about the, um, the work that's being done there. Good afternoon. On behalf of the school committee, Superintendent Doherty, our administrators, district leadership team, and the Reading Public School community, we are proud to join this rally today as upstanders. Upstanders against hateful and anti-Semitic graffiti actions or behavior in our schools or the greater Reading community. We do not tolerate hateful words or actions, bigotry, or any other form of racist behavior in our classrooms, schools, or on our grounds. There is simply no place for it in a free society committed to equal rights for all. I know that we can be and that we are better than that. We must stand together in not allowing the actions of the few to overshadow the tremendous kindness, respect, empathy, and acceptance our students and staff across all of our schools in the district embody every day inside and outside the classroom. We will continue to educate our students, provide safe and supportive schools, build a stronger and more vibrant community, create understanding and act with a sense of positive energy focused on respect for our differences, focused on the future of our young people. We need to understand embrace and respect our differences. We must continue to listen respectfully to each other's thoughts, learn from those conversations, and stand together to truly celebrate diversity. On behalf of the entire Reading Public School System, we are grateful for your attendance here today and your commitment to work together for a safer, more just community. Thank you very much. Introduce our state senator, Senator Jason Lewis. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It's an, really a pleasure and an honor to be with all of you, with our community leaders, and with uh, Dr. Ornstein uh, as well, a very, very special uh, person. Um, I had the um, opportunity recently to visit the New England Holocaust Memorial, which is in Boston. And um, if you haven't had the chance to visit it, I encourage you to go. And like visiting the Holocaust Museum in Washington or Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, it's a, an incredibly moving experience. Um, I was struck by a lot of things, but in particular the um, panel on one end, which uh, has engraved in it the words of the poem uh, from the German pastor that Andy Friedman read uh, earlier. And, um, 
and I was going to share the same poem with you. I won't, um, won't read the same words again, um, but it, um, it speaks to all of us. And I think um, what we should reflect on is what that poem means. And I think what it says is that we should not be passive bystanders. When we see hate, when we see intolerance, when we see disrespect, we should stand up, we should speak out. That's what we're doing by gathering here on the town of today. So thank you, thank you for being here. It's very upsetting and disturbing to all of us that there have been multi multiple incidents with swastikas in Reading over the past two years. And sadly, Reading is by no means unique. The uh, Anti-Defamation League has tracked incidents of anti-Semitism and we've seen a dramatic increase in Massachusetts and around the country over the last several years. But unlike some communities, Reading has not ignored or shrugged off these incidents as just acts of graffiti by a few misguided teenagers. No, instead, the Reading Public Schools and the town have taken strong proactive steps to educate our students and the community about what the swastika actually represents and importantly to promote positive values of respect for others and embracing difference. That's what really matters, the response that the community has made to these incidents. So I want to thank Reading embraces diversity. I want to thank the select board and the school committee and everyone for putting this rally together today, for being here, for being upstanders, not passive bystanders. And I want to thank the Reading community for serving as an example to all of us for how to confront anti-Semitism, racism, and all forms of bigotry and hatred. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Senator Lewis, for his proactive work and his uh, work in the state government. I also want to thank his colleague, Representative Bradley Jones, um, who I would now welcome to the mic. Thank you. Good morning. I want to uh, thank Rebecca Lieberman for inviting me to take part in today's rally. While frankly I'm sad at the events that bring us together today, I'm proud to stand here today with all of you as we speak with one voice to state unequivocally that there is no place for hate in Reading. And I know, I know Andy Friedman read this poem, and I know Jason Lewis referred to it. I'm going to read it again because uh, it frankly says it all. They came first for the communists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews. I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me, and by that time, there was no one left to speak up. Silence is dangerous. We must always speak up against anti-Semitism and never turn a blind eye to messages of hate. And make no mistake about it, the swastika is a symbol of hatred, intolerance, intimidation, violence, and evil. But it does not in any way represent what the Reading community is really all about. School Superintendent John Doherty said it best after similar incidents took place at the high school last year. We simply cannot write these acts off as isolated incidents. When we ignore hate, it grows. Today, let us all resolve that we cannot and will not tolerate this type of behavior and the message of hate that these swastikas represent. We must always be vigilant to make sure that everyone feels welcome in this community, regardless of their race, religion, or beliefs. Thank you. Thanks, Representative Jones. Um, my friends, uh, in Reading Embraces Diversity, we often talk about the difference between intent versus impact. And in these conversations over the last year, um, there have been those who have said, it's not that big a deal. It's just some kids, or it's just some people who are writing some things on walls. Why don't y'all just put it in a drawer and sit down? 
It's not that big a deal. I'm here to tell you that it is the impact of the message and not the intent of the people who write it that matters. And our next two speakers are gonna tell you about that impact. So Rebecca Lieberman and Tali Shore are two Jewish members of our community who have been brave and courageous to tell us about that impact, right? So when a hurt happens or a, a, a rupture happens in our community, the most important thing is that we talk to the people who are impacted, who are feeling that hurt, and we say, what is that impact on you and how can we, who have participated in that rupture, work to mend it? So I want you to listen carefully to the words of Rebecca Lieberman and Tali Shore, listen to their experiences, and hear it with an open heart. Rebecca? Thank you. My name is Rebecca Lieberman, and I'm here to tell you what it's like to be Jewish in Reading. I come from Minnesota and have lived in Reading with my family for 18 years. I'm first generation American on my father's side. He and his family were lucky to escape Germany in the 1930s. The other Jewish family in their small town died in a concentration camp. My Polish relatives who, who stayed did not survive the war. This is a very common story among Jews since six million European Jews were killed by the Nazis. Fast forward to the 1970s, just outside Minneapolis, Minnesota. I was about to start in seventh grade at the local middle school until my parents found out that swastikas were being drawn in lockers there. My parents immediately yanked me out. Fast forward again to 2000. With my husband and two kids, we moved to Reading to make room for our growing family. We were attracted by the family-friendly feel, good schools, and small but active Jewish community here. Even back then, there were hate incidents, like the swastika my nine-year-old son found in Washington Park, but they were few and far between. And then came spring of 2017. Swastikas were found at Reading Memorial High School in two different places, two weeks apart. Over the next several weeks, six more swastikas were found around the high school. A meeting was held with Jewish community members who told of alarming anti-Semitic comments and jokes their kids had heard at school, including comparing Jews to Santa Claus because both go up chimneys. Over the next several months, more swastikas were found at the high school, at both middle schools, and at the public library. Then in June of 2018, someone drew a swastika in the lobby of Parker Middle School along with the words, gas the Jews. Many town residents have not even been aware that all of this is happening. That's when I started to feel like nobody cares. Until today, that is. Not addressing the hate, not calling it out, not telling people, that does not work. In fact, two more swastikas were found at the high school two weeks ago. Ignoring these incidents and hoping they will go away sends a message that this behavior is tolerated. But standing up and being counted, saying this is unacceptable, that sends a stronger message. And while it may not happen immediately, I believe these types of events, like we're having today, and every individual's effort to stand up to hate, that will work. So thank you for being here today and being part of the solution. Hi. Um, so my name is Tali Shore. And first of all, I want to thank um, Red for organizing this event. And thank you for everyone here to come here um, on this very cold day to um, stand up against hate. But, um, so I'm Tali Shore, and I'm a senior at Reading Memorial High School, and I'm also a Jewish student. And so I'm just going to talk about my experience with this. So this all kind of started in, as Becky said, May of 2017, when I found a, I discovered a swastika drawn on the floor of a classroom. Um, and I told, I told my parents about it and I told Linda about it and then it started to gain more traction in town and eventually I stood up and spoke at it I spoke at a um, select board meeting and that was it was really important for me to do that because that was where I could actually share my story for the first time and um, after that that kind of set it really in motion and a lot of things started happening at the high school such as lessons in history classes and the short lessons about the impact of the swastika 
and you know, and assemblies with Anna Ornstein, and just some were more re well received than others. So after the, some of the lessons in class about the history and impact of the swastikas, um, I heard some of my peers saying things like, oh, why do you care so much about this? This is a waste of our time, and calm down, like brush it off, learn how to take a joke, it's just a joke. And I just say to them, what, what do you think is a joke about the death of six million of my people? How is the death of six million of my people a joke? It's not. It's not to me. It's very serious. So hearing these kinds of things said, it just makes me feel like I don't have any support in my community. It makes me feel unsafe in my community at school. And it also makes me feel kind of scared. And just that I was worried that have, if, this, if my peers found out that I was the one who reported the swastika, that they would possibly retaliate or just somehow lash out against me. And that's just, it's, and I'm sure that I'm not the only student who feels unsafe, especially other Jewish students after seeing these kinds of things and hearing these kinds of things. And that's not the environment that we can have in our town. And, um, but hearing Dr. Dr. Anna Ornstein speak, just having her hear, have, hearing her speak at, in assemblies, we had her come several times. She has just such an incredible message and she's so inspiring. And um, every time she tells her story, I'm so incredibly moved. So I think it's important to have her come and speak to people um, and she'll speak right after me. But the key is, well, after this, we still have a long way to go with this. It's not over. These things are still happening. We're still finding swastikas. It's not about telling people not to draw swastikas. It's about telling people to stand up. And I'm so glad that all of you came here to stand up. But the key Woo! is... The key is that we must respond to when this happens, to keep trying. Part of the tragedy in Nazi Germany was that intolerance was met with silence, with indifference. That's why it is essential that we respond as individuals and as a community. Thank you, Tali. And thank you, Rebecca, for your courage, for your willingness to stand up and tell us about your experiences. I hope that your courage is matched by our courage and that all of us who have gathered here today will also be willing to stand up and, and talk about our own experiences, things that we have seen in our own town, and respond with that same kind of willingness to step up and step out. Many of you have had the privilege of hearing Dr. Anna Ornstein speak before, but I would like to introduce her to you again. She is a, a renowned child psychologist and a survivor of the Holocaust. She's had a relationship with the community of Reading for a long time, and we are grateful that she has been um, willing to speak with our young people um, every year. She's made multiple trips out to Reading to come and speak with our young people, and more recently, our grown-ups, <laughs> about not only the, the virtues and the importance of tolerance, but also the dangers of totalitarianism and fascism, the dangers of, um, of suppressing multitudes of opinions. And so I would like to introduce her to you now, and would you please explain express your gratitude for her being here with us. Thank you very much for those beautiful words. And if you think that I am doing you a favor, you have to consider that you are doing me a favor. I am just so lucky. I feel so very lucky to be able to be here because this community had grown very dear to me. Over the years that Linda Doxer, whom you all know and I hope cherish the way I had cherished her, uh, had invited me repeatedly to the school. And I feel that since I am lucky to be still healthy and be able to walk around, it, it is wonderful that I am given the opportunity to tell you a little bit 
about what happens when you don't come out to such a rally. This is the kind of rally, this is the kind of gathering. I wish we had it in the 1930s. There was silence. There was deep silence, as you very well know. And in two years, Hitler was able, indeed, to pass 400 anti-Semitic, anti anybody who was against the state, uh, to be, at first, just arrested, put into jail, nothing serious is happening, economic uh, discrimination, <laughs> political discrimination. But you all know what it ended up with. It ended up with death factories. And I know this is not going to happen in this country. However, we know the early signs of what discrimination can do if it is left unchecked. And this type of resistance is what we need to do. I will tell you just a very little story that I uh, talk about with my friend who was born in Berlin, ended up in Auschwitz like I was in Auschwitz myself. And that's where my father died in the gas chamber. So the two of us get together and we say this. How was it that when we walked into a park and there were these benches that said, nicht für Juden. You know what that means. Not for Jews. She says, we should have sat down. We should have taken our Gentile neighbor friends and sit there and have them. And then, yes, they would have been arrested. But there was, unfortunately, on the side of not only the perpetrators, but the Jewish community, tolerated the early signs. There were economic signs, political signs. Jews could not go to the university. I couldn't go to a high school even. And that, oh, we can put up with it. And we put up with more, and then with more. And what did it do for us? I remember even when I, we were already collected in the uh, yard of a factory, my two brothers were already in a forced labor battalion. They were doing the dirty work for the Hungarian and the German army because Hungary was allied with the Germans. They did not come back. I am the only survivor in my family. But when I was on that factory uh, yard, and then we were waiting for the next transport that took us to Auschwitz. And I could hold my mother's and my father's hand. I even thought, if that's all they wanted us from us, maybe we can live with that. Why would we have to come to a point where you settle for that kind of a thing? It should not have to happen in this beautiful country. Now, it's very clear that that's why I'm here, because I can tell you some stories as to what can happen when you leave it alone. But what it really teaches us more than anything, that early signs have to be recognized. And it was this marvelous historian at here, Timothy Snyder, who said, the symbols of him of today are the reality of tomorrow. So when the children say, so why are you upset about the swastika? What does it mean? The symbol of uh, the, the swastika is not only the symbol of um, anti-Semitism. It is the symbol of hate, which means that the person who is hating you as a Jew or a Muslim or a black man is also suffering from being a hateful person. When I come to Reading and the children ask me, Dr. Ornstein, what does it make you feel when you see the swastika? I would like to know what does it make him feel if he's not a Jewish child. Because he now has a choice. Do you want to become a hateful person? Because people who are hateful, they suffer too. 
They are not necessarily very popular at first. They have to get into these terrible things, into legislation and into all kinds of uh, political acts. But when you experience the hatred itself, you are not necessarily a joyful and a happy person either. So there are many reasons why I am so delighted to be here and to see that you take these things so seriously as you have to. There is only one more thing that I want to share with you, because maybe you will recognize it in yourself. I think that an other emotion goes with fear, uh, with hate, and that is fear. And that is what I remember the most. In 1938, in 1939, I was an 11, 12-year-old girl, and I would say my parents tried very hard to kind of create a semblance of normalcy in our home. But fear permeated our home. Fear controlled every step we took. We took, spoke in hushed tone of voices. I remember my father taking deep sighs whenever he had to go anywhere. He was on house arrest. When I told my grandchildren that their great-grandfather was on house arrest, they wanted to know, oh, what did he do? I said to them, he had committed the worst crime of the 20th century. He was born a Jew. That is your crime, that you are born a Jew. And that is very hard for children in America to accept and to recognize. But I think we now better do that. We recognize whether you are a Muslim, a Jew, or anything of a different color, a different religion, you are in danger. And that is why I like all those quotes from the Miller, because it did really a prize. So I do want to let you go home, because it's a cold day. <laughs> but I did want to share with you the importance of fear as it put into the heart of the Jewish child like Tali and the other Jewish people that maybe you yourself may not experience but I'm asking you, think about that. Because hate begets fear, and fear is a destructive and horrible emotion. When you have to live with it, you are afraid that you become paralyzed by it. And this is why I said earlier, my parents tried to keep us children from knowing the danger that was hovering over us. So keep this country safe for your children and for your grandchildren. Thank you. It has been my absolute pleasure to get and privilege to get to know Dr. Anna Ornstein over these years. She first came uh, eight, ten years ago to Reading as part of a musical healing after the Holocaust program and has been coming ever since. And she keeps thanking me and us for bringing her here, but if we can give her another thank you, that would be awesome. She changes people's worlds. Snow Doxer and I play many roles here in town and I appreciate the trust that has been afforded me. Today I'm playing the role of a founding member of Reading Embraces Diversity and also a member of the Jewish community here in Reading and beyond. Uh, my job is actually to be quick. So I promise to do that and that's why I have this piece of paper. We know this rally was organized quickly and that many people broke engagements, changed their schedules, tra traveled miles to be, be, to be here. 
We want to thank each and every one of you for every effort that you made to be here. We know it took your time and was inconvenient. We really appreciate it. And hate is not convenient. Hate doesn't wait for the moment where we say, okay, I've got an hour tomorrow, I can deal with this. It doesn't wait. And so I thank the organizers also. Ann Landry, thank you for making this happen in five days. Your presence today, your, your presence here today matters in a very, very tangible way. The Reading Jewish community, as well as other ma minorities, can see, feel, and know that we are not alone, that you all care enough to be here, and that there are many our others who have sent messages of saying, oh, I wish I could be there, I'm at my children's uh, college weekend, and you know, thank you for your messages, those of you that couldn't be here, and thank you to all of you for being here. It really, really matters. We'd all like to say thank you to each of our speakers today, to our clergy for rushing out of church services, for making the time to be here, to our superintendent, to our town manager, I know you're here, thank you for being here, to our legislators, our select board, and our school committee, as well as to our other honored guests and to our organizer. I say it again because she has been magnificent. Ann Landry, thank you. And again, thank you all for making the schlep to be here. You are making it clear that our local and extended community does not and will not accept hate and anti-Semitism. We will not allow it to become our norm. Community and individual actions are necessary to combat hate, and we, each of us, none of us, are alone. Your being here is a vital step towards healing and lasting change. Thank you for being a part of the change going forward. If you're interested, I have to put a plug in, if you're interested in getting involved in Reading Embraces Diversity, there is a sign-up sheet somewhere here. There's going to be a meeting in November. So if you sign up, you will be alerted as to the date of that meeting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our work has started. It's not done. All of us will know that we're all committed to this. We are all here against hate and to include and embrace everyone, not to just tolerate, to embrace and do what we can for each of us, not just those who are targeted, each of us will not live as hateful people. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.